Uh, hello, welcome. Um, could uh, y'all please stand with me as we get ready to sing together? Let's just take a second um, just to breathe uh, and just to begin to set our minds on God and on who He is. Um, you might have come in here this morning in a really, really great place. Um, and you might have been dragged here this morning by somebody because of what you got going on. Um, and the really cool thing is that God knows all of that. He's not surprised. He's not unfamiliar with you. He knows every single hair on your head. He knows every thought of your brain, every feeling of your heart. And He loves you. And He wants you to come before Him this morning, not in any other way, but just to speak but just to spend time with you. God desires to be with us, and God desires us to be with Him. So let's just take a second and just breathe that truth in, that, man, we get to come before the being that spoke the universe into existence, and He wants us there. He wants us to experience Him this morning. Shout of praise. There is a 
lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see all of your faces despite all of the rain. But at least it's not 115 degrees, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So, good morning. My name is Ariel. Welcome. I am the um, Kids Ministry Director here at Grace, and it is so good to see you. If you're brand new this morning, if you don't mind um, just scanning that QR code, that'll just give us some information about you, give you some information about us. And then if you do that, if you'll head to our booth back there, the welcome sign, or the next steps on the way out, and we just have a little gift for you this morning, but it is so good to see you guys. And if you'll just turn and greet your neighbor, say good morning, and then we'll get back to worship. Uh, Y'all can take a seat. We're going to watch a quick video. All right, good morning, Grace. Uh, We're coming at you from Brighton, England, in the UK, uh, where we have a mission team of 28 that have come from uh, Lavernia and Shirts and are on mission for the last 10 days. We've been here doing doing a lot of work. And so God has been doing an incredible work. And so the city of Brighton is a city of around 300,000 people where it's believed that less than 1% of the people here uh, have a relationship with Jesus. So that's less than 3,000 people that know Jesus. Now, that means that the need is great. And so right now we're out and we're having conversations on the street. And so as we speak, there's there's probably 10 gospel conversations happening. And so, and that's just 10 of the many conversations we're having this week. So be in prayer for all of the gospel conversations that we're having, that, that God will continue to work through uh, our adults and students and, and people will come to the saving faith in Jesus. But that's not all we've been doing this week. Carson, can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. We're also doing an, an American sports camp and our, our teenagers and adults uh, have turned into coaches this week and they're coaching American football and what we're calling Chicago softball. And in the midst of the fun and the games and all the practices um, we're sitting down and we're opening God's word and and we're we're teaching about Jesus having gospel conversations and for a lot of the kids who are coming to this camp this will be their first time ever um, engaging with scripture like for themselves uh, and so just be be praying for them be praying for our, our teenagers and adults as well that, that God would move and that that uh, kids would come to know Christ and I know while we're here there's a lot going on back home so we so we just want to tell you a little bit about what's going on so on on August 9th, for you men, we'd invite you out to uh, Chad Sutton's house where there will be a men's gathering uh, where we'll be making sausage for uh, our one year birthday party that is coming up on August 11th. So if you're a man, uh, we would invite you out for just that amazing fellowship. Uh, and so come out for that. And then Carson, can you tell us about what else we have? Yes, we're also still doing the backpack drive and we need your help. We need more backpacks. If you could commit uh, to donating $10, what that $10 does is, is it goes directly to, to buying supplies for students who can't afford them, like backpacks and, and pencils, paper, all that kind of stuff. And if you feel like the Lord might be leading you to do that, you can sign up through links through our social media pages, um, online in the church center app. All those places will take you to where you can donate $10 um, to provide for those students. And we also need help um, on August 10th at 2 o'clock 
at the, the Shirts YMCA, we're, we're packing those backpacks, um, and we're praying over them, and then we're going to deliver the backpacks after that. We would love your help. We'd love for you to be there. We'd love for you to be a part. So if you could help with that, that would be great. Let me pray for us as we continue in worship. Dear Father God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for what you're doing in England. But even more so, God, we pray for what you are doing uh, at, at church this morning. God, we pray for worship. And God, we pray for Micah as he brings the message, God, that, that you will do an incredible work this morning. And, uh, and God, we look forward to seeing what you're going to do as you begin to transform lives through opening and engaging in your prayer. So God, we thank you for who you are, what you do. We pray that in your name. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Later. Would you stand with us as we continue in worship? It's my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his womb, his hands, his feet, Savior on mercy. His body bound. And drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. At break of dawn, the sun of heaven rose again. Oh, tremble, death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. We will see. 
thank you for bringing us here today to gather together and, and be able to sing as a body of believers together. We thank you for the breath in our lungs, God, for the life that you've put in our bodies today. And we just pray that as we, um, as we continue on in this service, that you would just open our hearts, God, to what you have to tell us. Um, through Micah. God, we thank you so much that he's here today and for the word that you've given him. Um, and we just pray that you would uh, help us to hear it, even if it's hard. Um, God, we love you and we thank you for this day. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Good morning, Grace. It's my pleasure to greet you again and see you again. I can't wait to see you next week. I'll be back. Um, but this morning, I want to introduce uh, our speaker, and he is an amazing man of God. He has been uh, my mentor for a couple of years. He routinely goes out, him and his wife, and they do marriage ministry all over the state of Texas. And he is an amazing man of God, and he has got to have so much incredible things to share with you this morning. So uh, would you welcome Micah Williams, and y'all have a great Sunday, and I can't wait to see you next week. Well, um, if you know Jeffrey, unfortunately, you know uh, that uh, everything he just said was not absolutely true. <laughs> no. no, you know that he's, he's great. Uh, he's never said that stuff to me, so it catches me off a little gar off guard. So just bear with me as I kind of process all of this. No. And beyond that of what he said, it, was, it took me a while to get past uh, how good Jeffrey's legs look in, in a pair of shorts. So, um, so I, I don't know if y'all can start having meetings about his attire, but I do think that at some point he needs to share that beautiful sight with everyone here. So, um, but no, I, I, I am extremely excited about being here today, uh, super honored. Um, and so I, I just, this is my second time here at Shirts, and of course I've been walking this journey with Jeffrey and, and the staff and just kind of praying with them and, and just really seeking God's will for this campus and trying to make sure that through everything that we all bring uh, honor and glory to Christ. And so again, uh, super excited about that. But before we get into that, I would like to take a little bit of an opportunity and maybe a little bit out of the norm, and this has nothing to do with, with the sermon. But for just the next few moments, I'm going to, to ask you to, to do something um, I know, and I'm just going to be very honest with you, that sometimes uh, someone will ask me to pray for something. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll pray for that. And I never do. Uh, and so I really got convicted of that, and I'm just sharing one of my personal convictions um, several years ago. And so I'm very careful to say, yeah, I'll pray for that. Or if I do say that, I actually pray, um, which I think I'm not trying to point any fingers. I'm just telling you the nastiness that I am. Um, and so I know that we've all been told, hey, you got to pray for your pastors. You got to pray for your pastors. You got to pray for your church. You got to pray for each other. You got to pray, pray, pray. And if you're like me, I'm like, well, that's a lot of praying. And, you know, I'll forget all of it. So this morning, I want to get a little bit more specific. And what I, I, I'm asking us to do in just a few moments is to intentionally pray for Jeffrey, for Ashley, for the volunteers of Grace Shirts, and for the people of, of Shirts. And so in that, pray for wisdom, pray for comfort, pray for peace, pray for strength and encouragement. Because I'm going to tell you, Satan, unlike ever before, and I've heard all these people always say, Satan's attacking and attacking and attacking. I just know with the churches, the men and women that are important in my life, I'm sure here in this community, and Satan's after us. I believe it's because God's fixing to do tremendous things. And Satan's trying to do everything he can to destroy that, even though he knows that God's wins, he's trying to diminish or, or to stop us from enduring and, and continuing on. And so I just want to, 
Can we just pray? Pray for them. Pray for this church. So we're going to take a moment and have a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to your your throne. And Lord, let it be the prayer of our community. That Lord, we are reminded daily, pray for the shepherds you've put here for us. For Jeffrey, for Ashley, for their families, for all the volunteers, for our church. Because, Lord, as Satan attacks, Lord, you're the one, you're the one that holds the victory. So, God, we lift them up this morning, praising you for what is done, what will be done, and what is God, we love you, give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, Jeffrey called me and said, hey, I need you to come preach. And I was like, okay, sure. He's like, well, we're in a series. And I said, well, what's the name of the series? He says, things we wish Jesus didn't say. And I was like, eh, I'm busy. He's like, eh, he already told me. And I was like, I know. All right, Jeffrey, I'll start praying about it and figure out where God's leading me at. And um, I just kept getting, going to this verse, and it just completely, it just bugged me. It was just bothering me. And every time I would look at it, I'd be like, no, 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 no. God, you really don't want me to pray or preach about that because, you know, hey, I mean, that's pretty tough. And, 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 and I really don't have to deal with all my stuff, God. And so I don't want to, can I just do something easy like love him or God? Can I just talk about, you know, how we're supposed to love our spouses or we're supposed to love our children? Or can, can I do something easy that I've already gotten taken care of? And during this process of me being vulnerable enough to you to let you know that I actually did argue with God a lot about all this, um, I was reminded of a story, and it's the story of this uh, man who took his wife and his mother-in-law to Jerusalem. And unfortunately, during their trip, the mother-in-law passed away. The coroner come up to him and said, hey, if you want to transport the body back to the United States, it's going to cost you $5,000. He said, but if you would like to lay her, uh, uh, lay her at rest here, it will cost you just $150. $50. And the man took some time and thought about it. He said, you know, I'll pay the 5000 And the coroner said, I, financially, I don't understand why you're willing to do that. You know, the, Jerusalem's beautiful. It's holy. Why are you willing to spend the extra money to have your mother, mother-in-law transported back home? The man very honestly said, the only person I know that's ever been buried in Jerusalem was Jesus, and I'm not taking that chance. <laughs> My wife has told me, and she'll tell me again, you probably shouldn't have said that. So I'm just saying, my mother-in-law's great. I, so, uh, but like that story, this key scripture just kept coming back to me. And it was about carrying your cross. And every time it would come up, I would respond to Jesus, are you serious? And then it stopped being, are you serious? And I'm just like, seriously? Come on, dude. Carry your cross, Micah. <laughs> seriously? If you pull out your copy of words, God's word, we'll look in Luke chapter 14, verse 25 and 27. This is now a great crowd accompanies him. And he turned to them. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You know, I 
as we look at this verse, I believe that there's two misconceptions that come out of this. And then we're going to look at some of the truths from these misconceptions and from this verse. See, everything in the verse is going great. Because I'm kind of like this type of person that if I was in the crowd, I try to put myself in what's going on. So if I was in the crowd, right, and I'm following after Jesus, and man, this is Jesus, this Jesus, have you seen this guy? Jesus, 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 he raises people from the dead. Jesus heals people. Did you see him do that? Did you see him feed the fire? I went, Jesus, right? So I'm kind of walking. Jesus. I'm a disciple. And so, supernaturally, I don't know how. Of course, I actually do. And if you want to figure that out, you can know why. Jesus turns around because he probably knows like my heart, right? And says, hey, dude. This is in Micah's translation of what goes on in my head. So it kind of lets you know how crazy I can actually be. So if I'm in this deal, right? And I'm like, I'm walking with Jesus. I'm the man. Jesus turns around and says, hey, Micah. And I'm like, you, what you got, dog? Hey, you want to be my disciple? You know I do. Right? I'm like, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a disciple of Jesus. Ooh. I even have a cross around my neck. Right? He says, hey, hate your mother and your father. Hey, hate your wife and your children. <laughs> hate yourself. And the first misconception that we have is that Jesus is not saying to hate everyone, which is where my problem became with the verse, which is why I thought that I didn't want, Jesus shouldn't be saying this or things I wished he didn't say, because come on, Jesus, you're not saying that I'm supposed to hate everyone. No, 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 no. And because I'm trying to justify why I have a problem with what Jesus has said because of my selfishness, because of my pridefulness, because of my arrogance, because I actually think I'm the most important thing in this world and not Jesus, then because I'm dealing with that, I have to kind of deal with why did he say this? And you first look at the very first word that I have problems with, and it's that word hate. Because my mother and now my wife has told me numerous times, don't say hate. You don't really hate them. Because our definition of hate is to despise, to set out, to get away from, to discard. But the word here, from Greek, the original word is miso. Now, I'm not saying that right because I don't speak Greek as a second, third, or fourth language. I speak one language and it's redneck. Okay? That's all I can do. Sorry about that. But miso is the Greek translation of the word hate in the scripture. And so it means to love less than. Well, hang on a second. Because him saying that, he, that we should hate something goes completely against God's character. Because in Matthew 23 or 22, 37 through 39 says, And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. So here's where it comes to come out of character. If I'm supposed to love or hate somebody, this is why it never made sense and why I wanted to avoid it like there was no tomorrow because I didn't understand it. So I was trying to put my definitions into these words. And it said the second, the, this is the greatest and first. And the second is like to this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So how is Jesus telling me to hate something, but then he tells me to love everything? He's not telling me to hate it. My definition, he's saying, listen, love less, love less. And so this morning, I will confess to you that when I started reading this, I start struggling with the simple fact that, man, the problem with what Jesus says that I wished he wouldn't say starts with me, not Jesus. It starts with me. Because I've got to be completely honest with you. I'm arrogant. I'm prideful. I'm selfish. And the reality is, is I think that I am the most important thing. And because I think that, I have a problem with someone or something telling me what I should or shouldn't do. 
And I'm just being honest. It's just me. Now, it may not be you, and you may have everything in your life all figured out, but I want you to know something, that if you're anything like me, or a little bit like me, or, oh, there's no way I'll ever be like you, wherever you're at on this scale, I want you to understand that when we have a problem with what Jesus says, it starts with me, not Jesus. The second misconception is that every time we get into it is in Matthew, it says that we have to, in Luke, excuse me, it says that we have to pick up our cross and carry it. Now, I've got to be honest with you. Jesus doesn't expect us to pick up a cross and carry it every day, a physical cross. This is completely out of character. In Matthew 11, 28 and 29, it says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and can carry heavy, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle in spirit, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, when it comes to carrying of the cross, we envision this person, and we've all seen him on any news deal that you have. You put it on your shoulder, and you're walking all across America with it and all that stuff. Jesus isn't saying that. Look at me. Do you think I can pick up any log and put it on my shoulders and carry it more than five feet and fall down? Man, come on. And so I'm sitting here thinking. So Jesus says, all right, got to hate, and so that was my first, and now I've got to carry a cross. And the misconception is that he's saying that we've got to do that. Because we look at the cross as this wood. Let me submit to you that Jesus looks at the cross as love. We think of it as a gruesome death. Jesus looks at it as love. And so as we deal with these two misconceptions, let's kind of get into some three truths that we're going to deal with. And the very first truth is that Jesus is calling us to have Jesus at the first of our life, the first love of our lives. When it says that we are to hate, and again, hate being less than, love less than, Jesus is saying his position of priority in our lives needs to be number one. And so what Jesus is saying to me is, Micah, I know that you love your wife. I know that you love your job. I know that you love your standing in community. I know that you love your church. I know that you love your reputation. But what I've got to ask you is, Micah, do you love me more? And I'm going to be honest with you. In most of those situations, not. I had a conversation with one of my... I'm in a group of disciples making disciples. And we were talking about if something happened, would we lay down our lives... For Jesus, because there's a lot of missionaries, a lot of Christian believers that are in this world now that if they say, yes, I believe in Jesus, they are, ex uh, th th they are executed or they're, they're, they're sent out from their families. There's horrible things they can do. And here in America, yeah, I believe in Jesus. It's no biggie. But when it comes down to it, if we had to choose, if I had to choose between my wife and my love for Jesus, would I say yes or would I do more for my wife? I don't, I, I struggled with that because the reality is in my life and in my situation that I'm dealing with and the nastiness that I am, I have to tell you that there are many, 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 many days that I love my wife better and more than I do Jesus. I love my standing in the community better or more than I do Jesus. And the truth is, the only way that I can love my wife better, the only way that I can love my community better, the only way that I can love my church better is if I learn to love Jesus more. Because the Bible says we love because He first loved us. So if I want to love my wife more, if I want to love my church more, if I want to love my community more, if I want to love whatever I do more, 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 I have to love Jesus more. 
I have to learn to love Him. Learn more about Him. I have to have Him as the number one love of my life. Because I want to be a great husband to my wife. Let me love Jesus with all that I am. I want to be a great servant to this church, to the community of Christ. I've got to do that by loving Jesus more. I have to learn to love Him, which means I have to dive deep into Him. I can't be afraid of the hard things that He says to me because the reality is the more and more that He chips away at me, the more and more He's revealed in my life. And I can't be afraid of that. And so I'm just sharing with you this morning the stuff that I had to go through to deal with what the things I wish Jesus didn't say. Because He wants us to have Him as the first love of our lives. The second thing that Jesus is calling us through this the scripture is he's calling us to live sacrificially. We think of the cross as this gruesome excruciating death. We think of the floggings, the crown of thorns, and it is all of that. And so much more. Jesus looks at the cross as sacrificial living. He comes to this earth for one purpose and one purpose only. To pay a price for our sin. If we will carry our cross with a life that is sacrificial is what Jesus is calling us to do. See, the reason I had an issue with this is because, quite honestly, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm really great. I'm a great husband. I love my wife well. Dude, I love Jesus. I'm up here, y'all are down there. I'm pretty good. Right? I got people calling me, asking me to pray for them. I read my Bible. Not every day, but, you know, some of the days. I listen to Christian music when I can't find something else on the radio. I mean, I, I didn't say that out loud, sorry. Uh, I, yeah, I listen to Christian music all the time. I don't do anything that anybody would ever think is wrong. I... And probably the best person I know. Just speaking about me. I'm not talking about anybody else here. All right. And if you fall into that category, I love you. So does God, more importantly. And he gives me a whole lot of grace and forgiveness. And so it's fantastic because I walk in that like there's no tomorrow. And so I have a problem with this carrying of the cross. Again, I, which is the biggest problem because I think it's all about me. Right. And so I have to realize the, the best way that I can live is to be sacrificial. Because the Bible says in Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or you drink or whatever you do, do to the glory of God. So I, I struggle with this sacrificial living because let's just be honest, people are going to take advantage of me. People are going to hurt me. People are going to think less of me. My standing may go down. I won't feel the importance. All that is very, very true. But the reality is, sacrificial living is for Jesus. But what does it matter? What happens to me? I want to love my wife better. Let me sacrifice more. I want to love this church. Let me live sacrificially. I want to love uh, my job and, and, and do things there. Let me be sacrificial there. Well, what if I don't get a promotion? It's okay, because guess what? God's in control of everything. And again, whether we eat or we drink or whatever we do, we do to the glory of God. The last truth and nothing but the truth Jesus is calling us to live for something and someone bigger than ourselves. Obviously, you can tell that I've struggled 
of that point as well. Anytime I go through something or any time that I am doing something, unfortunately, my default is, is what am I getting out of it? Why should I give you this much of my time? And if I do, what's my reward? When I am the most important thing and trying to bring glory to myself, typically, it becomes very unsuccessful in my life. And I can just be very honest with you this morning. When believers do things for their glory, we are completely messing up. In all the churches I go to, and again, this is going to probably step on your toes, um, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'll be right over here when it's over with if you want to come and yell at me. When a church, and most of the churches I go to, are always begging for volunteers. It shows me some one thing and one thing for sure. Most people are more concerned about how this church fits into their schedule than God's. Sorry, I know that's tough. But the reality is we don't come here for whatever Jeffrey can provide us for. We don't come here because we think Ashley is really, really neat. Though those things are true and they are very helpful, we come here because God has directed us to come here to be fed, to be filled, and to be able to serve for his kingdom. I'm going to say it again because you're like, whoa, you're getting on us. I'm not getting on you. I'm encouraging you to do one thing and the one thing only is to begin to allow God to use the greatness that you are, the skills and the abilities that you have to expand the kingdom of God here in this area of shirts. Do that. There's someone that needs to, we need help in the children's ministry. Step up. Look, I, I love kids, but I know that, you know, on the weekends they're mine and I don't really want to give you any of it. Hang on a second. Is it about you or is it about God? Because we're supposed to be living for something bigger than ourselves. Well, I don't really want to be here. I'd rather be at the main campus or, what? What? We're living for ourselves and that's completely wrong. We have to be living for God. The cause of Christ is so much greater. And so this scripture, this issue that I have that I wish Jesus didn't say has absolutely nothing to do with what Jesus said, has everything to do with me. Because I want to be the first and most important thing. And I need you to understand the process that I went through and it broke me like there was no tomorrow because the reality is, is I have to live my life with Jesus being at the center of it. Now I'm going to close. And I'm going to close with a couple of scriptures and I'm going to say some things that you're going to be like, was it harder than what you said? Yeah. I'm sorry. But I'm just telling you the stuff I had to deal with. I'm hoping that your journey is not this hard. But again, I'm just being honest. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, it says very simply this. And he said to all, if you would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In Luke 14, 27, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And so we go back to our key text verse in Luke and it says, and the people were following. 
And Jesus turns around and says, if you want to be my disciple. And so I have some questions this morning that I'm going to ask you to begin to kind of think about. Because do you want to be a disciple? Someone that knows Jesus and follows Jesus. Because if you do, now we have to examine that verse. Which means, am I the most important thing? Or is Jesus? Do I care more about my success than Jesus? Because I want to be a follower of Jesus. And it says that I have to deny myself. So Jesus began to reveal to me things that I put in front of you. Not that they're not important because Lord have mercy. They are some of the most important things in our lives. But God allow me to put Jesus as the priority position in my life. And I want to love him more. I want to know him more. I want to be better and all these other important things in my life. And the only way that I know that I can be better is if I put Jesus right in the middle of everything that I do. That's what my question is. Do you want to follow Jesus? Because if so, we have to deny ourselves. The second question that I have is will you carry your cross? Because the first time I asked myself that question and many times after, I was like, seriously, there's no way. No way. But understand that if I'll deny myself, put Jesus at the center, my response can only be one thing and one thing only, and that's absolutely. And the great thing about carrying your cross that we don't think of when Jesus was walking from Pilate to Golgotha. It was a long journey. It was a painful journey. The Bible and history records that several times he stumbled. He was too weak to carry it. He had to get help. And so I know that these answers to these questions are going to require us to kind of get into what we are. But I want you to know there are people in this congregation, in this community, that are willing to help you with the journey. Am I successful every day? No. Is God loving and graceful enough to allow me to pick myself up? to have brothers and sisters to pick me up for him to hold me in his righteous hand because I can't hold Jesus in any of my hands and to walk me through a path that's not any fun. And you may be like me, that if you answer those two questions or in the process of answering those questions, what's the outcome? What's the reward? Because again, I only want to do things if I know what I'm getting out of it. And I know that that's selfish. And I know you're probably thinking, Lord have mercy, Jeffrey, never let this guy come back. I'm just being real with you. As a sinner, that was bought with a price. Jesus Christ. That his blood is shed over my failures. His Holy Spirit convicts me and guides me so that I can be more and more like him, so that I can bring him glory and him honor. I sat here this morning, and I confessed that during these questions, God, so if I love you more, then I can love my wife more, and so then that makes me look like a better husband, so I'm really good with that. Just like, whoa, 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 well, yeah, but if I love you more, then I can be a better speaker. And if I'm a better speaker, then I'll get more opportunities and people will think I'm really great and they'll look forward to it. And all these, whoa, 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 it's not about you. It's not about you. So the great reward 
of saying, yes, I'm going to deny myself. The great reward of, yes, I'm going to pick up my cross and I'm going to live sacrificially. Yes, I'm going to live for something so much bigger than myself, which is you, Jesus. The great reward of all that is very simply summed up in one great word. You ready for it? Jesus. It's just Jesus. And so I have to be okay knowing that I'm not in control. Knowing that Jesus is more than enough. So as Chris comes, I'm going to ask you very simply. This morning we're going to give you some time to kind of work through the mess of what the scripture is. I'm asking you to do it in 10 minutes, and it took me 10 weeks, so sorry. But the reality is that Jesus may be breaking your heart this morning. He may be in your mind having you think about what's the position of the priority. And so I will leave you this morning with one final question. Will you carry the cross? For me, as of this moment, I've made a commitment. Absolutely. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for pricking my heart. Thank you. For chipping away. Because God, I don't want the world to see me. And God, I stand here saying I want them to see you, that I want to bring you glory. God, that I want to love less everything else and love you more. God, I know that if I'll do that, the love that I have for what we say is less is going to be so much greater than I could ever give. And God, I want to deny myself and I, I want to pick up my cross and I want to live sacrificially to bring you honor. Because God, I want my life to be about you. And God, I pray that it is the prayer of Grace Shirts, Grace Lavernia, all the churches in all the states in all the world. God, that we would just bring honor and glory to you. And God, I know that I will probably be messed up in the next 30 minutes, but I praise you for letting me know that I messed up and for loving me through it. Never said I wouldn't go in the valley. You just said you would walk with me through it. God, I love you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand with me.
let's not just sing this. We've, most of you have probably heard the song, Oh Hawk. But don't just sing this because we're singing it. Sing this because it's true. Don't sing it, declare it. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the to the back and we need to take the curtains down. I'm looking at my wife to see if I get any of this wrong. I think I can do it. Okay. So after we release, if you could take a chair, take it to the back, there will be people there uh, waiting to take that chair from you and put it on the racks. If you would like to help take the curtains down, where's Ryan? The uh, guy with the hat raising his hand in the back. Uh, he will give you direction on how to take down the curtains. As you are leaving today, there will be people with umbrellas to walk you to your car so you don't get too terribly soaked from the rain. How'd I do? Nice. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, have a blessed week. We love y'all, and we'll see y'all next week.